Hello everyone and welcome to Faith and Friends. After a week of food and presidential trivia, we're happy to be back with you with a brand new show. Lots of exciting stuff to share. Jennifer will join us momentarily. I think she's currently on a water slide or a roller coaster. How'd she get all the good assignments? She's the boss. She is the boss, yes. So we look forward to that. Colin, you doing okay after that roller? So was that a water slide collision with Jennifer? Yeah, floor director Colin Pate and uh, was part of the, the big group up at the Lutheran Synod. Uh, we'll take you to Sandusky, Ohio to show today's show to show you the recent ELCA Synod conference and a whole lot more. That also includes the Finley High School band Pantasia. You don't want to miss that. A little steel drum action and here in Lima, we'll take you to a military monument as we honor those who have served our country. First though, our verse of the day, 2 Samuel 22, 2 through 4. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength and whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge. My Savior, you save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Well, May 26th, of course, Memorial Day. And in just a few short weeks, it'll be Flag Day on June the 14th. There are two days created to focus on our military sacrifice and our country. What comes to mind when you think of these days? Are they merely a chance to enjoy a backyard barbecue? Well, in today's OIO in the community segment, retired First Sergeant Paul Joseph has some thoughts on how our generation can teach the other generations to respect these holidays and also introduces us to a special military memorial housed right here in Allen County. This monument that we're here today is at the Army Reserve Center located at the corner of Reed Road and Shawnee Roads here in Lyme, Ohio. It was a Eagle Scout project incepted and designed back in 2006 by local Eagle Scout Kyle Beck. He has done so in honor of his brother, his older brother Andy, who's also serving right now in Kuwait as we speak here today. He's on his third combat tour as well. The monument itself is a five-sided monument and it is designed to honor the four deceased soldiers from the 93rd Engineer Battalion who were killed in 2005 while serving in Iraq. On the fifth side of this monument, as we go around as well, you will see that there is a picture of the entire battalion as it was assembled in, in FOB Spiker, which is north of Tikrit. As we take a look at each side of the monument here, we have Specialist Kendall Frederick. Specialist Frederick came from Chicago, Illinois, and served with us as a cross-leveled soldier. The next soldier you see here is Specialist Gary Andy Eckert. Sergeant Eckert, as he was later promoted posthumously, uh, was served two combat tours as well. He was injured by an IED in 2003, came back again for his second tour in 2005, and unfortunately was um, killed during that time by an IED blast as well. The battalion consisted of 688 soldiers who were present. Uh, we had approximately 44 soldiers who were cross-leveled in and out due to rotations, uh, injuries, or even the deaths that we did sustain. The engineer battalion came together. We deployed in December of 2004. We returned home late in December of 2005. We do rely on our military, of course, to help provide for our peace and in wartime as well. But the Memorial Day, which is originally Decoration Day, uh, is more of a time to recognize and honor the dead who have served our country. And of course on June 14th, which is Flag Day, the flag which all of our service members have served under at one time. Uh, we need to be able to honor our flag and know and respect it as well. And we need to pass on this information to the generations to come both now and long after we're gone as well. The key on this here, of course, is knowledge and information. What we know to be true about how to honor our flag, we need to teach our younger generations today the importance of it and why we do that, why we do respect our flag at all times. As far as our military history and those which carry that, both as our older generations which are now passing, take time to stop and listen and ask. And for our military members out there as well too, every single one of you has a story to tell. No matter what you did, what branch, what your job was, you need to share that experience and that in total, all that history on to generations as well, family and friends. 
What a great idea to pass along that wisdom. Well, just last week, more than a thousand members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America gathered at Kalahari Resort in Sandusky for the 2014 Northwestern Ohio Synod Gathering. Also in attendance, several TV44 staff members, including Jennifer Beck. It was a weekend of fellowship, music, yes, water slides, and encouragement for all who took part. Jennifer talked with the bishop of the denomination, as well as several local pastors who had nothing but positive things to say. A really enjoyable weekend at Kalahari in Sandusky with the Northwestern Ohio Synod Gathering. Dr. Marcus Lorman is with me. Another uh, successful event. More than a thousand people here. Why is it so important to bring together pastors, lay ministers, people of the ELCA for an event like this? I think it does a couple things. One is that it helps the people who are here to realize that that this church is pretty big and involves lots of people with lots of different gifts. So with this particular event we combined our our annual assembly with an event bringing youth here for a servant event, with an event doing some discipleship training, uh, and with an event that was just for families, for fam uh, that was led by our uh, Lutheran camp staff. So it did a lot of things and I think I saw a lot of smiles. In the church as a whole, we hear a lot about the next generation not wanting to embrace the church. What What is the Senate doing to help combat that and bring these young people in, not just for the good of them, but that their hearts would desire to reach out and impact others? Well, I think there are a couple of things that are, that are uh, important. One is simply acknowledging their presence. So I found myself struck by how uh, their being here and acknowledging them and interacting with them uh, they responded to that. So one of the humorous uh, things that the youth were doing is uh, in this little uh, game they were playing, they were all supposed to get a selfie with the bishop. So I'd have all of these teenagers running over to me and saying, hi, bishop, can I have a selfie with you? So it was a way of, and that would lead to conversation and engagement. So I think there are ways which we can acknowledge and, and uh, recognize our youth at the same time uh, not talk down to them. So, uh, so I think that those, those efforts are really important for congregations had more than a thousand people here so you certainly had an opportunity to impact many who are going to go back and do the same in their congregations but if there is one message you could send out to your entire synod through the television camera to encourage what would you want to say to them to, to step out and uh, show be the hands and feet of Jesus in what they do well I think our theme I can't resist going back to our theme for this year namely growing as disciples that it's critical for us each individually to grow in our relationship with Jesus and then number two to keep asking how are how would God use us how would the Holy Spirit use us to nurture other people in their faith as well and that can happen cross-generationally and cross-culturally and and those pieces I think are really important uh, for us to be the church in this center we keep talking about our vocation is to be a sign of God's in breaking reign in Jesus shorthand when people see us they see Jesus that's our prayer well, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing TV44 to be a part of this event again. Always great to be able to do it. You're welcome. And lots of local pastors were a part of this event as well. And they, too, echo many of the bishop's comments as we come to being the hands and feet of Jesus in the region. I think this is just a wonderful place, and especially this year as we gather with young people and really young kids and older folks and a time to gather together to celebrate our faith and to do the business of the church, but to really share the witness of Jesus Christ with the people that are here and hopefully some people that are staying here that may not be from our group. When you're in a parish and a congregation, sometimes you can feel a sense of isolation and that you're just out there by yourself doing your thing. And it's a great reminder of how we're a part of a larger church and, uh, and that we, we have ministry that goes far beyond our congregations and that we're in partnership with that. You know, it is always good when the whole Northwestern Ohio Synod gets together. And one of the reasons for that is it's so easy as Christians to think of ourselves as individuals on one hand, and also sometimes just to think of our own little church. And you know, those are both beautiful gifts of God. But the bigger gift is when we gather together. Our Lord speaks of the whole church gathering and really being the body of Christ in this world. And someday we look forward to that heavenly kingdom when all of God's people are together. So if we can get kind of a snapshot of what that might be like in a place like this, it really does the heart good, makes all the difference in the world. Well, Zach Bowers was also up in Sandusky for the ELCA Synod Gathering. He and Jennifer decided to check out some of the other touristy offerings in the region including Cedar Point, America's roller coast, which just recently opened the 2014 season. 
Well, thanks guys. You know, you can't be in Sandusky for long without hearing the roar of roller coasters and finding your way to Cedar Point. Joining me now is Brian, a representative of Cedar Point, and we're standing out in front of some of your, or near your newer rides, Gatekeeper being one of those. Cedar Point only a week and two days open so far for the summer. What's in store for this summer? Yeah, you know, this summer we're focusing on family fun. We've got two brand new family rides, Pipe Scream and Lake Erie Eagles, uh, both shorter height requirements, so we're, again, uh, more kids and more families can ride, but that's really what we're known here for. You know, we're known to provide a day's worth of fun entertainment for people of all ages, but really family focused. That's right, and of course you think Cedar Point and you think roller coasters immediately. But that's not only the case, that's not only what you offer. You offer a lot of things for a lot of a variety of people. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you want tall, fast rides and roller coasters, I mean, the, the skyline's dominated with them. Uh, but really, you know, that's one of the biggest misconceptions about Cedar Point is that we are only big, tall, fast rides and roller coasters, uh, and really nothing could be further from the truth. We have 72 rides here. More than half of them, kids or kids and their parents can ride together. You know, I've got four little ones all under the age of eight. Uh, we come to the park and have a blast. We never once step foot on a roller coaster. You know, we have three huge kids areas. We've got great live shows, the Peanuts characters. So yeah, so again, if you got little ones, or even if you're not fans of big, tall, fast rides and coasters, there's plenty for you to do here at Cedar Point. Well, give us just a brief overview of your two new family rides you had just mentioned. Yeah, Pipe Scream, it's kind of a combination of a thrill ride and a coaster in one. You sit on top of this platform that rotates 360 degrees while you travel along a 300 foot long track. A lot of thrills, but again, family friendly. And then our other ride is kind of a classic amusement park ride. It's a flyers ride, which means you go around in a circle, you know, just like you went on a swing ride, but you can actually control the flight pattern of your individual ride carriage. There's a rudder or a sail on the front of your ride and how you swing it determines kind of how far out you swing, how close in you swing. So I like to say you can kind of control your own thrill level from mild to wild on Lake Erie Eagles. Very cool. Well, the other thing that Cedar Point is well known for is some of their theme days throughout the year. And how can we um, be informed and, and know when those are coming so we can maybe look ahead at the schedule and know what Cedar Point is planning? Yeah, absolutely. If you're planning or thinking about coming to Cedar Point this summer, your first resource is our website, which is cedarpoint.com. You can find not only dates of operation, hours of operation, uh, but deals. You know, we have great money saving deals on admission, uh, on hotel packages, or if you want to stay a couple days, go to the water park. The best prices are online. And again, it's a great resource. Uh, before you plan your visit. Well, we are standing out front of the gatekeeper just in front of us here. One of your newer coasters, tell us a little bit about this. It seems to be a little bit, looking at it, more of a thrill ride to some big hills. Yeah, definitely. Gatekeeper was our huge new attraction last year. Uh, broke world records for the tallest wing coaster of its kind, the fastest, the longest. There's actually, uh, you are upside down on Gatekeeper higher than any other coaster in the entire world. So yeah, again, uh, we're known here for record-breaking thrills and chills at Cedar Point, and Gatekeeper is a great ad addition to our lineup. Uh, last year, over two million people rode Gatekeeper. So yeah, it's a big hit and uh, guests are looking forward to come back this summer riding it again. I'm definitely looking forward to that. You guys, Jennifer and I are both going to ride the gatekeeper here just shortly. Wish us luck. We hope we survive. This is Zach reporting from Cedar Point for Faith and Friends. As of last report, Zach and Jennifer are still waiting in line for, was it the Demon Drop? I don't know. One of the roller coasters. They'll be joining <laughs> us shortly though. Meanwhile, every year thousands of people visit TV44. Maybe you're one of those who have visited our studios for a tour, maybe the annual auction, or to bring in a monthly donation. If you've been here in the last year, you've entered via our Walk of Honor. It's a walkway right outside our main entrance door designed first as a way to honor God for his faithfulness to our station, and secondly, as a way to honor those we love. TV44 is currently accepting new paver sponsors. To add to that walkway, some use this as a chance to commemorate a family member or an anniversary or a wedding. It's a permanent, lasting opportunity to thank the Lord for His goodness. Those donating $1,000 or more can be an 8x8 paver sponsor. $500 sponsorship gets you half the size at 4x8. For more information, call 419-339-4444. Just stop by the station during normal business hours. Check it out. Just walk by and see the many great things God is doing. Well, some officials in Logan County are using a well-known building to establish lifelong memories and encourage healthy left lifestyles and positive family values. Dancy is with Pastor Shelley Stevenson to talk about Union Station. Dancy? Well, Pastor Shelley Stevenson joins us again, and um, she's always a joy to talk with. So much happening in Bow Fountain at her church, Christ Covenant Church. 
but so much that you have taken outside the walls of the church itself. And I want to welcome you back to the show. Thank you. Um, drug addiction has become such a part of our society today. There are no communities who are immune, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with the church itself and, and just the Christian community to help the problem? Right, you know, we, we decided that we wanted to be a part of the solution somehow. Yeah. Because we were having people in our own church, and I don't have a big church, but that were affected by drug addiction within their family, whether it was a sibling, you know, a nephew, a grandchild. Right. And, and I'm like, how do we work with the court systems to be a part of the solution? So I had the opportunity of talking to Judge Michael Brady and his assistant, Annette Dio, and I said, you know, you know, we're part of the local church. How can we be a part part of what you're doing and help you. And, and they seem very blessed about that, that the church would want to get involved in such a dark, you know, dirty subject. And they, they really encouraged me to come to some of the family treatment courts. And then they eventually asked me to be a spiritual advisor. And that was such a blessing because then I could be a part of it from a different aspect and we could we could collaborate on what they're doing, which is an incredible program, and in helping the addicts get through uh, recovery, but also focusing on their children, their husbands, their wives, their parents, to be able to make it um, a healing, uh, an entire healing program from the inside out with them. So we are very involved with, with that aspect of community. You know, I would think that that would be a daring step for the judge because of the, you know, separation of church and state and he, he needs to walk a fine line, I'm sure. Right. But what, um, what gave him the, the encouragement or the, the motivation really to, to take that leap of faith. Right, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the things I admire about him greatly. Um, he is a man of God and he knows there's certain things he can and cannot do, mm -hmm. but he'll be the first to say, you know, that separation of church and state, come on, really? Has there really ever been, exactly. right? Exactly, but he said, we need the church. And just him speaking that, and he will speak it openly. There's certain things he said the church can do that we can't do, and That's vice true. versa. There's certain things that, that they understand, the political realm, the, you know, he can mandate certain things to help people. Mm -hmm. And so he will, many times in court, if I'm in there, he'll uh, talk to the young women and say, you need to hook up with Pastor Shelley and get into a church, because if you don't add that part of it, I'll probably see you back here again. Oh. So it's a blessing. And they, they just celebrated their 10 year anniversary of this treatment court and they were sharing some of the testimonies and victories and, and he had asked me to come to this event and to bless this program and pray over this program and that was so humbling to me because he put us in a situation, meaning the church, to speak in the name of Jesus and we all know that that's where the victory will really stick and be eternal. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I am in awe of your, your work that you're doing there and um, I wish you the very best because this is something I, God needs to be in the center of it. Amen, so, that's right. Um, thank you very much, Pastor Shelley, for thank joining you. us. All right, back to you. How's the gatekeepers at? Yeah, uh, what, what's the deal? You guys take off and have all this fun? It now you decided to join us halfway through? The gatekeeper was exhilarating. I it can't was, wait to go on it. It was a I lot of fun. I still haven't gone on it two years in. You're up there at the front of the park. There's a lot of twists, turns, upside down, round and round. Hmm. I don't know anything else that rhymes, but it was fun. My nine-year-old daughter did it, and uh, they were a little worried. The the uh, some, the of the people, yeah, some of the gatekeepers were not <laughs> sure how she would handle it, but uh, she, I think she was chanting she halfway it. through. Halfway through, I'm sitting next to her, and halfway through, I can hear, all I hear is, best ride ever, <laughs> screaming over and over again. Better than the Iron Dragon? Probably in her opinion, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get there. Well, we were not just at Cedar Point. Of course, we were also at Kalahari, which was another really tough place to be working. So sorry <laughs> about this. But while we were at Kalahari this past weekend, we were introduced to Pantasia, which has made it some of the top high school musicians at Finley High School. Pantasia definitely brought something unique and inspiring to the ELCA Synod Conference last weekend. Take a moment and enjoy not just their sounds, but also their personality that is part of their performance.
that your new musical band's gonna be? I'm feeling the groove. I tell you what, we were there to listen to these, the Pantasia. Don't that was a break lot those. Of fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, and, <laughs> and we didn't show it on on a, on the video, but there was another song that they did where all of the youth at the synod conference oh, yeah. were were marching through the entire thing. They're doing a conga they doing line. There's a thing. conga yeah. line in the middle of the ELCA Senate. Did they play the drums in the wave pool? That's what I want to know. In the wave pool? I did not <laughs> see them in the wave pool. No. You can't take the steel drum in the pool. It'll <laughs> rust. It probably gives a unique sound. Right. Like splashing with the drum beat. It's a lot of fun. I like that idea. Well, it's time now to take a moment to pray for your needs. This past week, the following are just some of the many prayer requests that came through TV 44 view through viewers, through mail, internet, and phone. One says, I am thankful my mom gave me life. Several asked us to pray for financial struggles, friends, and loved ones with cancer, and also depression. This particular viewer asked for prayer for her daughter. We want to remember the many who also share the prayer request. And Andy, let's take a moment and pray over these requests. Let's do that. Father, we do lift up the daughter of this one viewer. Uh, whatever she is going through, that you would comfort her, you would meet her, and you would be real to her. Also, the concerns for health, the cancer, and the different sicknesses, Lord, that you would be the healer and the physician and the comforter that you promised to be during your scripture. Lord, we thank you so much that we can trust you and you walk through us during these tough times. And we cling to you during them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you can share your prayer request with TV444 anytime via our prayer line, 419-339-4444, or on the website at WTLW.com. You can also include prayer requests on your response card when you donate or respond back to us. Luckily, Andy did not damage any of these beautiful... Orange geese. They're ducks. Okay. <laughs> Whatever they are, they can be yours. Because the auction is coming up September 6th, then this is the time of the year we start gathering auction items. I have a beautiful daylily here. One is of that real? Those are very cool. I was looking at those before. What we does it do? This is it's one a of, of a, of a series of um, Lennox flowers. We have probably about 15 of them. I'm being attacked by the duck. Is it a duck or a goose? And that's why we don't have nice things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but these are very neat. They're auction items, and we, it's really neat to see the different variety of items that come through the doors uh, in preparation for auction uh, season. We have a challenge going on. It has to do with cake. We just made this up, so. <laughs> <laughs> six <laughs> foot seven. That is how tall be, you are, it's right? It's got to be six eight. It's got to be taller than The me. challenge is out there. I understand you have issued the challenge. I have. For anyone to donate furniture, but more specifically cake <laughs> that is larger than Andy furniture? Lynch. Cake furniture, but cakes that are larger than six foot seven. Maybe an angel food cake you could sit on would be kind of spongy. Yeah. Nice chair. But yeah, real cake, six foot eight, and your prize is watching me eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're auctioning it off after or before? I hope before you eat it. <laughs> so someone pays to watch me eat it? Is that how it works? You know, we can work out the details <laughs> later. The bottom line details is if anyone's got are minor. giant cakes out there, let's get them in. Well, you can learn more about the auction in the latest issue of Take One, TV44's newsletter. It's on its way to mailboxes all across the region this week. It's got great information about programming, special programming that's coming up, uh, really inspiring letter. Ooh, did that break? No, it did not oh, break. Okay. <laughs> more information about our co-chairs, honorary co-chairs for our auction, as well as a Brownie mud cup recipe and a mm. nice picture of the three of us eating brownie mud There's cups. There's four of us here, Jennifer. Zach is not in the picture. Sorry, Zach. Zach did not you did get a food segment without me? Mud cups. You went to Sandusky without us? I have. I did not know you did a food segment without. I thought that I was. All right. You're still our friend, Zach. I don't know. It's questionable. Have now. faith in us. <laughs> well, if you aren't receiving our newsletter, we hope you do. Do you get our newsletter, Zach? <laughs> I do. Okay, at least you get your, the Let's newsletter. Get my address I will be informed about the brownie segment that happened without me in the newsletter. I'm glad. This is how I find about things at the TV44 station. I work here, yet I don't find out until the newsletter. What do I have to do to get my address changed on the newsletter list, All Jennifer? you have to do is give us a call, Andy. Uh, call one of our wonderful receptionists. They'd be happy to do it, 339-4444, or email us. What extension is that? So I can call from my desk. <laughs> Now, I believe you can also look the newsletter online, is that correct? That is true. Sometimes you can look at past versions as well. Aren't you in charge of that, Zach? 
I am. So you All can right. view the newsletter, take one newsletter. We encourage you. It's just a great way to be in touch with the TV station. Well, it's time now for us to come to a close. And we again want to leave you with 2 Samuel 22, 2 through 4, which says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. It's a good song. It comes from scripture. Some of the best songs mm. do just that. All right, it's time to start baking cakes. It's time to start building cakes. You have till September 6th to do that. Of course, we're looking at for lots of other auction donation items as well. That's gonna do it. We'll see you next time on Faith and Friends.